Water is perhaps our most precious resource here on Earth, and yet between pollution and the climate crisis damaging it, and the lack of knowledge we have on our oceans and other water resources, there is fairly frequent groundbreaking research coming to light about water reserves on Earth. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a glance at three interesting water-based discoveries. China's acoustic probe heard sound from the Mariana Trench. Have you ever wondered how much we can hear in the depth of the oceans? Well, in 2017, a team of scientists from China conducted China's first acoustic test in the Mariana Trench, quite literally the deepest part of our oceans. The research team from Northwestern Polytechnical University in Shanxi province carried out this experiment in deep water sound communication in a small valley known as Challenger Deep, in the southern end of the Mariana Trench, approximately 11 kilometers under the surface. A 10-kilometer acoustic probe, fitted with sensors capable of detecting sounds 9.3 kilometers away, was stationed in the area. This was the first acoustic test carried out here by a Chinese team, and the second ever conducted, though the Mariana Trench has had many visitors over the years, including both manned and unmanned trips beginning with the US submersible trip in 1960. The Mariana Trench, or more specifically Challenger Deep, is approximately 320 kilometers southwest from Guam. Understanding the role of sound under the sea is vital in understanding more about marine life and could have military applications too. With the absence of light at such deep levels underwater, a key component to communication and navigation between sea creatures are the noises made. But a research possibility with greater potential is that by understanding the underwater acoustic characteristics we can expect to hear, we can give this technology a role in the military. If we are able to conduct a great deal of deep sea acoustic research, we can apply this to the development of sonar technology, in turn facilitating better anti-submarine and warfare equipment and abilities. The research team left six acoustic sensors in the Mariana Trench, so that information on ambient noise or the background, subtle sounds, can be gathered and data can be obtained for a year. The sensors were retrieved a year later, in the November of 2018. This year-long data collection involved researchers from the Ocean University of China and the Institute of Acoustics and the Chinese Academy of Sciences. This research has a number of benefits and is incredibly fascinating, from more advanced technology to better understanding marine life. The focus on deep-sea scientific exploration is not short-lived and was listed in 2020 by Beijing as a key project in an upcoming five-year plan. Scientists discover ocean dead zone larger than Connecticut In the Gulf of Mexico, scientists have discovered a dead zone, also referred to as hypoxia, it is an area where the water has such limited oxygen that marine life cannot survive there. This particular hypoxia zone covers a staggering 6,334 square miles, making it larger than the state of Connecticut, and some scientists have suggested that the climate crisis may be behind this abnormally large hypoxia zone. Hypoxia are caused when the nutrients from the land run into the watershed and then, over time, into the ocean. This is usually a result of too much fertilizer being applied on crops and similar produce. The nitrogen, along with other compounds, encourage algae to grow. When the excess algae then deteriorate, the decay uses up a great deal of oxygen before sinking into the water. Nancy Rabelais, a researcher from the Louisiana State University, who is part of the team tracking the hypoxic zone, explained that the low oxygen levels are alarmingly close to the shore with some areas lacking oxygen almost entirely. From our understanding of how these hypoxic zones can be caused, it is clear that there is a link between agricultural and farming practices, though experts are suggesting that we should not be too quick to consider that climate change is a key underlying factor. The EPA Assistant Administrator for Water, Radhika Fox, explained that the impact of climate change on communities in various ways cannot be ignored during this. She stated, climate is directly linked to water, including the flow of nutrient pollution into the Gulf of Mexico. 
she continued to say, as we work to address the Gulf of Mexico hypoxic zone, we must consider climate change and we must strengthen our collaboration and partnerships to make needed progress. The US Department of Agriculture has aimed to tackle this issue too, spending more than $50 million to improve the Mississippi River watershed in order to prevent further damage to the Gulf of Mexico. The climate crisis is impacting so many areas of our lives and it is time to take action and accountability before it is too late. Scientists discover an ocean 400 miles beneath our feet that could fill our oceans three times over. I am sure plenty of us are familiar with the water cycle from school. It rains, the water collects in rivers, oceans and the like, the precipitation evaporates, condenses to form clouds, to then rain again. However, scientists have long theorized that the water cycle is not quite as simple as primary school taught us, and for decades there have been theories and speculation among scientists that within the Earth's structure there is some source of water playing an underground role in what has been named a whole Earth water cycle. In 2014, research placed us one step closer to proving this theory right and finding out just how this could work. The structure of the Earth is composed of distinct parts, the crust, the hard rock exterior to our planet, the upper mantle, then the lower mantle, two near liquid layers of Earth made of molten rock, the outer core, a liquid part of the Earth's core, and the inner core, the solid center to our planet that sometimes reaches a staggering 5,500 degrees Celsius. In 2014, the search was over, and scientists reported their success in discovering a large reservoir of water within the area being referred to as the transition zone, meaning the division between the upper and the lower mantle. This underground water source is so large, it has been said that with that volume of water, we could fill all of the Earth's oceans three times. This study, conducted by a number of scientists, perhaps most notably geophysicists throughout the United States, used data collected from the US array to support their hypotheses and conduct further research into the water inside our planet. The US Array is a collection of hundreds of seismographs from various locations throughout the USA. Seismographs are used to record the movements of the ground and are most commonly used to anticipate and record earthquakes, hence the established network of them. These scientists used the data from a number of national seismographs over numerous years and conducted a series of complex calculations to try and draw conclusions from the movements within the Earth's mantle and core. Based on the data at hand, these scientists believe that they have found the huge water reserve in between the upper and lower mantle, between 250 and 410 miles below the surface of the Earth. Unfortunately, at that depth of the Earth, the science becomes more complex than simply plowing ahead on an excavation to see if it really is there after all. The deepest a human has been able to dig into the Earth is 12 kilometers, an estimated halfway through the crust, with the mission grinding to a halt because the drill bit was melted by geothermal energy. It goes without saying that 7.5 miles is nothing compared to 410, and we are a long way off being able to confirm exactly what is happening down there. The theory that has stemmed from this research and in many ways simultaneously facilitated it is as follows. Many believe that the Earth's mantle contains ringwood light, a mineral that, when under extreme pressure, is capable of trapping water. Based on the measurements cited in the US array, it appears as though convection pushes the ringwoodite further into the mantle, resulting in an increase in pressure which then pushes the water trapped within the ringwoodite out, a process called dehydration melting. So far, this is the extent of the research. The geology of inner Earth is a slow field of study. It can take years of data collection before any of it is remotely useful, meaning we may be waiting a little while longer for thorough answers. The real-life application of this fascinating deep Earth geology research is monumental. If the ringwood light contains just 2.6% water, that would fill Earth's oceans three times, and the real figure could be a great deal more. If we were somehow able to access this resource, the impact for us would be phenomenal. Though for now, we must continue to preserve and look after our fresh water reserves. 
science is a long way away from assessing this just yet. This also challenges a number of existing theories. Prior to this discovery, the accepted understanding was that water had arrived on Earth as a result of icy comets. Though this research could suggest that the water on the surface, accessible to us on Earth, somehow came from the mantle transition zone instead. If so, could we access it again? In the long term, using the insides of Earth to inform us, be it with data from seismographs or studying tectonic plates, could allow us to predict the weather, changes in sea levels, earthquakes, and climate change disasters far more accurately, allowing us to tackle these issues head-on. The water inside the Earth presents new challenges, theories, and opportunities. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.